fam, welcome back to <laughs> your channel. I cannot see those numbers on this freaking camera. We already know we're going to have some camera technical difficulties. Go ahead and get prepared. But as you can tell by the title of this video, this is class part two. My little simple decor tips that I have used here in my apartment to decorate the space and hopefully answering a lot of the questions that you guys email me about. So this is class in session part two. I was very, very surprised, pleasantly surprised that class in session one went as well as it did. I'm glad I was able to help. Who knew? Who would have knew? Who would have knew? Okay, who would have knew? So I'm filming this in the evening, late evening. Actually, it's night. Not even evening, it's night. So the lighting is probably going to be really crazy. Um, I did fix the light. So hopefully it's bright enough for you to be able to see. So in case you didn't see one, I'm going to try to link it up above. And at the end of this video, or maybe down below, you might want to check that one out first because we're going to be doing the remainder of the apartment. And I'm trying to make it shorter than an hour and some odd long. Okay. So here in my dining space area. Okay. First of all, let me say this too. You guys are looking at the apartment in the raw. And by in the raw, I mean, for me, um, I haven't did my weekly cleaning, if you will. <laughs> so what you see is how I'm living, okay? For those of you that know, I do live alone. So it's never a lot to pick up for me, but I literally do have a routine now that I do every other week, one thing, and then every week, something. So, every other week, I will touch every single piece of furniture, mirror, everything in my apartment. Every other week will be touched. Um, every week, the main stuff will be touched. And I vacuum already like four or five times, literally a day, because I'm OCD. So, right now, this is Friday night when I'm filming. So, tomorrow is my actual touch everything in the entire apartment cleaning day, Saturday morning. So, how you see it is how it is on a regular, okay? All right, so here in the dining space, and I am, I don't have coffee. I have white wine tonight. Get your drink of choice. Get your uh, notepad, your whatever you need to take notes, sis, and uh, let's jump into it. So, in my dining space, and again, all these tips are things that I've used here, okay? Either here or at my home um, and they can be applied to any style. Doesn't have to be bling girl, love mirrors, you know, all that frou fruitness. It could be farmhouse, traditional, contemporary, whatever your style is. These are just kind of like directional um tips, more so than they are just like decor stuff. So whatever your style is, you can use this. Um, the main thing is I want you guys to decorate according to the space you're given. That's like the overall main thing. Once you get that down, scale and size, decorate to the space you're given, you're pretty much good to go. Whatever your style is, whatever whatever it is, okay? For me, um, here in the apartment, for those of you that don't know, um, this apartment is actually larger than my house. Minus um, the basement. The overall layout, the, the square footage is larger than the whole upper level and half of the basement at my house. Okay? So, it's still a lot of space for just one person. So, here in my dining area, it's not that big. Okay? So, in the house, I had a six-seater oval table because the size warranted a table that size what i've learned in decorating stuff is when you play with shapes you get a real put together look so by that i mean i have this really long tall buffet cabinet in the back okay so it's you know rectangle right above it i have circular mirrors two of them Circular mirrors. I even had a circular mirror over it before I went to this look here, okay? And then I'll turn you in a second, but then you see this picture right here on the wall, which is also uh, 
more like a squarish rectangle, okay? And then a round table, okay? So when you're visually looking at it right now, as you're looking at it, and you're, from what you can see, your eye is literally bouncing seamlessly. You probably look there, or either you look straight ahead because this is the focal point, okay? That's one of the other things I wanted to mention. I mentioned it in the class in session one. Every room should have a focal point, and it probably does have a focal point. You just don't realize it. So whatever the largest piece of whatever it is in that room, say the bed headboard, that will be the focal point, or the TV and console in the living room is the focal point. That wall of right there, okay? That's what this wall is. This is my dining room focal point. And if it's facing a wall in front of it, which is a window over here, that's perfect with these mirrors because mirrors do what? Reflect light, spread light around, and give the illusion that a space is larger. So having the mirrors directly in front of the window in the daytime, it just bounces light all around this apartment. So it gets beautiful lighting during the day. I'm a mirror girl, so it's gonna you're going to see a mirror or mirrored something in every single space in my entire apartment, okay? So, with the buffet, okay, like I was telling you guys with the uh, console for the TV, right? You don't necessarily have to go out and buy a big old buffet like that. I, that was a splurge for me. But I have, t I told you guys, I have used dressers before. Um, if you want something that's taller, say you want that height, because that's that's a very tall buffet. That is a true buffet right there. Um, but you find a dresser, like I told you with the console, right? You can always add height to the legs. And it just depends on the legs of the furniture would determine how you would add them to them. So I can't visually say, okay, if you had this, do this, this, and this to add. I'm I'm good for lifting something up, okay? But it just depends on what it is, just like the headboards, okay? So, but you could get the same look like I did in the house using a dresser, longer dresser, okay? If you have the space for it, okay? If you are a small space liver, some people say, Sharon, stop saying you small space living because that apartment is not small. But in essence, in comparison to someone in a house house, this would be, I think, small space living. So, if you are struggling with small space living, okay, items like this that can do double duty, hold decor, and the functionality of it, it can hold extra dishes or whatever I choose to put in there. Right now, it's empty because I downsized a lot of stuff. Uh, when I move, so nothing is in it, and all of my white entertaining stuff is neatly in the cabinets over here, okay, so nothing is in it except um, something that I had for the Christmas holiday, okay, but on the uh, buffet, as you see, I've added lamps, because lamps do anchor, it does bounce light around, it changes the mood of the room, in case I don't want to run that big overhead light, I have those two lamps, there and I kept I, here's how here's how I think when I when I'm decorating for me that's just because I'm a bling girl so when I'm because I'm so you know attracted to mirrored and shiny objects I have to balance it out by using something else okay so rather than getting a mirrored buffet I went with a two-tone textured weathered looking buffet it's very masculine, if you will. It's a very masculine, strong piece. That piece is serious business. It's just straight beautiful to me. But I softened it up with my girly lamps, mercury glass, okay, lamps, then my Pier 1 mosaic vase in the middle, and again, the sparkle, I'll bring you closer, and then the sparkly um, twigs from like the Christmas season, okay, the real glittery. And then, of course, I added in uh, the brass Flamingo and some little brass. I don't know what those little things are called beside it, but I'll bring you closer. And then, of course, my candle. Um, so I have a masculine piece for those of you ladies that are sharing a space with the he-men in your life. That's a, an excellent piece to 
do like a buffet without going over the top. Unless, and if, now if you do go mirrored, say so you say, okay, I like mirrored stuff too. I'm going to use a mirrored buffet. Those are absolutely beautiful. I was looking at those first, but that caught my eye and it's just more, I see more longevity in this because I have a mirror everywhere on the wall already. So I would have been in mirror overload. But let's say you do go with the mirror piece. Sharon, what do I hang above it? Can I hang a mirror above a mirror piece? You can. You can. But you want to come in with a different texture on top, okay, to break up all that mirror. So maybe your lamps, you wouldn't go with some mirrored lamps on a mirrored buffet with a mirror hanging on the wall. It's too much mirror. It's too cold. So you may want to go with something softer, maybe some porcelain-like lamps, chunkier lamps, slimmer lamps. It just depends on the space, of course, what you're working with, would determine the lamps. But always try to break up and bring in different textures so that everything is not just like, like that, okay? So that's what I've done here. Plan with shapes. Scale to the size, okay? That wall is befitting for those two big circular mirrors, that big old piece, the tree in the corner, the two lamps. I kept it really simple on the top, didn't overdo it. I'm, I'm more into this whole less is more look and just making a statement and an initial wow factor with, boom, that's just a wow factor. I also went with uh, a darker wall, so that accent wall is darker than the rest of the walls. That's Acer Gray by Sharon Williams. And then you guys know I use Repos Gray on the other walls. Okay, so round table. All right. I don't know. Here we go, y'all. So we got this table here. Hold up. I feel like y'all gonna cut a flip on me. Um, can you see the table? Let me scoot you down, y'all. Here we go. All right. So, focus, camera, be good to the people. Be good. Can you see the table? Okay, so, I went with this round weather table. There's the base. This table is a statement piece on its own, okay? So, for this little section, a round table just made sense as opposed to a square table. It's something about a round dining room table in a small space that just looks so elegant to me as opposed to just a squared off table. I feel like this area would have been too blocked off looking, okay? So, went with the round weather table. This is, I can always have this, no matter what my decor style is, how I change things up. This table will always be a functional, sturdy, useful, traditional piece that could transition with any decor style I choose to put on it, Okay? So, you guys know that I am a true mirror girl, okay? And I told you I like playing with shapes. So, here I have the mirrored chargers with a DIY piece of bling. Let me show you what that looks like. This is a, um, what do you call that? foam board from the Dollar Tree, and then the bling wrap is from Hobby Lobby. And I just cut it out, wrapped it around, hot glued it down, and it just adds that, it, I'm, a, I'm a layer. I'm a layer person. That's another thing that I feel is kind of important in decor is layering. It gives that luxurious look that really put together, I know what I'm doing, look. So I layer everything, okay? You totally don't have to do that, but I'm just saying. So I got my mirrored bling stuff here which stays on the table all the time this humongous tray which is also a bling mirrored piece and then this uh silver bowl with some greenery to break up all of this that's going on right here the table is one texture okay table chairs one texture i got a lot of mirror stuff going on going on okay so to break that up and to take your eye from it, so much of it I added in some greenery. So, right there in the middle, just like that. And these little balls are from, these little Tokerary beady balls are from Hobby Lobby. And then I have this kind in there as well, which actually feels real. 
So that's that. And then like some little flowers just for that extra whatever. Okay. So that's how I came up with the dining room. And then of course the green tree back there for the granary to break up. Again, all of that that I have going on over there. Okay, so let me turn you this way now, hopefully. Um, if you have the space and if you entertain, bark art. Okay, bark art, bark art, bark art, bark art. I don't, please stand still a thing. Okay, wait, y'all. I just feel like this is the <laughs> so gonna flip. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. Not again, please. We don't have time for this. Okay. So, bar cart, right? Let's say, okay, you don't, again, it's all about saving money. It's all about, um, you know, choosing things that will fit your space, first of all. And most importantly, it doesn't necessarily have to be what it says it is, okay? Again, I don't know if this is really a bar cart or not. But to me, aesthetically, it looks like a bar cart, okay? So, I've turned it into a bar cart. Now, I know y'all probably thinking, Sharon, what is going on, honey? Your wine supply is on zero. I know it. I know it. I didn't make it out today because I've been filming all day to get wine. But I went with an, uh, this acrylic stand, whatever it is. I felt like it looked bar cartish with a little handle on it. I feel like it's a plant stand holder. I'm not sure. But I just dressed it with... A lot of clear things because I didn't want this to be like the focal point in the area. I wanted it to be functional. So I was glad that everything was acrylic and see-through. So my glasses, my mirror, uh, the mirror box here that has bar stuff in it. And then the little crystal bowl that holds like um, my stoppers, wine stoppers, flour to soften it, straws. I do have some alcoholic beverages down there. And then uh, for the color, pop of color, four lemons and limes, okay? And normally this would be colorful as well because of the wine selection that I choose. And then, of course, a soft uh, hand towel. I can roll this because it has wheels on it over into the living room space if I am entertaining in there. So let's say, because ball carts can be expensive, okay, they can. Let's say you don't, you know, Sharon, I ain't got no money for no bar cart. I ain't got no money for it. You can DIY one, depending on the space that you have. Um, you can find some um, that you might need to just like paint. I found one when I was at the house that I left there uh, at a thrift store for like five freaking dollars. And I just dismantled it painted it and gave it a brand new look and it was down in the basement um i'll try to find a video if i can those videos are really really old but you could totally make a bar car out of anything okay just long as it's befitting for the space and it's not so in your face and too cluttered with a whole lot of stuff unless you do a whole whole lot of entertaining like that for me just a few bottles of you know alcohol that's more so for my Yes, and me, I'm more of a just a smooth wine drinker. So, wine, uh, I mean, a uh, bar cart, if you have the space for one in your dining space or even in your living room. Some people prefer them in their living space or their den or family room or whatever. But anytime you choose something that's see-through, that the eye just kind of keeps flowing, it doesn't look like it take up that much space. And it's perfect for small space livers like apartment dwellers or small house people okay so let's move over here into the uh kitchen area okay are we recording i'm recording okay so remember scale to size things and, and scale let me just turn you around really really quick so i can just show you this picture on the wall okay that picture is to size for that space right because when you look at that wall, it's glittery, it's sparkly, and it almost mimics the one, the canvas over there as well. Again, I like things that keep the eye moving seamlessly around the room. So that piece is actually a statement piece facing this way. Again, you know my focal point wall is here, but that is also a statement piece because of the wow factor that it presents on that wall. Okay? And it's to scale. Like that picture 
is large enough for that space. Anything smaller than that would look crazy on that wall. So things that fit the space. Kitchen pretty simple uh, for me and everybody is different. Um, I'm, I'm that person who don't like stuff out like a lot of clutter. I hate clutter and I don't like like toasters stuff like that out. That's just me personally. So I kind of keep my cabinets very to a minimum unless it's decor. Coffee pot, which I use consistently. So that's a must. Okay. It has to be out. And then you see I have a tea kettle on the stove. White porcelain, a spoon rest. And then my white porcelain um, canisters. Okay. Because I don't like anything practical that you can see through. Like, I wouldn't have clear containers with, say, like, flour, sugar out. That's just me personally. I like a more cleaner surface, okay? Um, and then over here, okay, um, I have a candle burning. I have a candle in every corner of my apartment, okay? I have some roses that this young man gave me here, some orange roses in this picture here. That's normally not there, but I just got them yesterday, so I'll put them in there. Um, so I keep my decor very simple. I have dishes in the sink. This is real life. And I always put a little water and fabuloso <laughs> in the sink on this side just so that it can just smell up the apartment all the time. It always smells good. I hope this thing ain't. Like blurry, okay? And then paper towels, of course. This is the wine that I'm drinking. And then I have, all the way down here, clear apothecary jars with full lemons, limes, and apples for the aesthetic. Okay? Trash can. And then, of course, focus. And then, of course, uh, lotion, hand soap, greenery again. So, not anything practical out. All that stuff is put away. I pull out, you know, the blender, the, the toaster if I need it, or anything else that I need to use. Other stuff like that, I put it away because I can't stand to see it out, okay? Um, a lot of people always want to know how do you decorate above your cabinets. Like, how do you decorate above the cabinets? Back at the house, I decorated above the cabinets um, all the time. Wait a minute. Okay, as you can see up there. Um, so in here, I just have three little silver pots with white flowers in them on this side, separated, small to scale. I didn't want anything that was, I didn't want anything in here being the focal point other than, say, that picture at the end of the wall down there, right there. I don't want a focal point in here. So if I had to put something larger vases above the cabinet area, your eye would have went straight up there. I don't want anything in here being the focal point in this kitchen because it's right here beside this dining room that's doing a whole, whole bunch on its own, okay? So, for me, I just like, to, again, simplicity. I just have three silver little small uh, flower pots with white flowers in them. And then I have a bigger one over there on that cabinet. Okay, where is it? That cabinet right there. And then, again, that piece on the wall there, okay, that I told you, that I, you're going to always find a mirror in every spot, every corner in my house, um, but I'm getting on playing with textures, and I'm layering, because this is a piece by itself, and it's like a whitewashed wood kind of a look, kind of like the uh, table and the buffet, and then I have a blinged out mirror, circle, cir circle and square, okay, playing them both up, right here together in that spot. So that, if anything, that's the focal point for my kitchen. Again, when you visually look in my space, okay, everything just flows. Because, again, that directly mimics this over here. Even though it's a picture, the squareness of it, the roundness of it, it mimics what I just showed you in the dining area. Okay? So that's pretty much the gist of the kitchen. And then, of course, I have three white... Um, bar stools and this you bar stools are to choice um 
it's what you like it's what you like and of course what you can get okay these are very inexpensive uh, bar stools and they come in a variety of colors actually I believe you could probably find these online um, a lot of places sell them like two for the price of something okay these I believe came from the at-home store and I, I went with this because this is a very high uh, counter it's higher than the actual counter area, so I needed something that was that could be adjusted for someone really, really tall or really, really short. So I went with the hydraulic style uh, bar stools. And again, bar stools is the choice with what you like, and it's what fits the actual counter. So some are bar height, and some are some people have bars that are counter, what they consider counter height. So you could go with a smaller, shorter bar. If you don't want to back on your bar, that's fine as well. Again, for me, I like creating designated spaces. So even though these take up a not a lot of space, but they do kind of sell a little bit because there's no lip here. But I like creating that boundary of here's my living room over here. The couch separates that. These have this is their own little area. So the back, you know, all the same. And it's kind of like a little walkway that I can just walk through. And then dining area where you are right now. And then kitchen over there. Okay. So I'm playing with shapes. Everything is to scale. Um, I'm mixing textures. So everything isn't just all the same. It is not icy and cold um, in the spot. Okay. And of course you're going to always, always, always come over here. I got a candle. That's some, from the time you walk in, spread throughout. I burn all day long. There's one right here burning right now. The black one there. I actually got a shot with me where I picked those up at the other day. And you probably haven't seen that video yet. Okay, so let's go down the hall. Okay. Okay, so we're in my hallway. Now, if depending on what your hallway look like, okay, how your hallway is set up. Everybody's layout is different or whatever. And here in my hallway, again, this is a pretty large wall. So I'm that person that likes a wow factor all at once. I don't like a whole lot of little tchotchke things. That's just me personally. I like more of a boom. So you don't see, you haven't seen any room in here during the tour, during our class session, where I have like a bunch of stuff. On the wall all my walls are either one large piece of something in this case I'm doing three things of course the mirror and then the mosaic panels right here which are from I think those are from I feel like Ross and they're way cheaper I always tell you this way way cheaper than the pier one panels and they're equally as pretty, okay? So that's how that looks. That's my hallway. Again, and I like the mirror factor because to me it just bounces light and it just opens things up. And I'm not an art girl. Like, I'm not the girl you're going to see with, like, art in her space. That's just not my, my thing, okay? Um, and then, of course, the um, my brooch wall right here, which is actually just me camouflaging what is the uh, air conditioner vent um, filter door, okay? So it's just bling wrap, and it, I, I can just peel that right off and, you know, take my things and go if I, you know, need to. If you're lucky enough to have a laundry space, be it a laundry room or a laundry, just a closet with a wash and dryer in it, the main thing for laundry, anything, be it a room or closet, it's just organization. You either want to, depending on what you're working with, okay, if it's in a closet, if you have like the stackable uh, washer dryer or whatever, depending on what your situation is, um, you'll want to, if you can, I mean, that's if you can, make your practical pieces like your Clorox and your fabric softener and things like that, you want to make them pretty so that they can sit out. 
baskets to conceal. They're, they're always good concealers when you want to just toss stuff in. So I have like the actual, I don't like to see the container, okay? So I have like the baskets and then I do have a tray up here, a wooden tray. Again, I love texture. Um, I'm trying to hold you up. And then I have, um, I have my fabric softener and washing powder in these containers, which I think are from Bullseye Playground. And they're just cute little containers. I just keep refilling them. Um, I have a jar here, which is also from the Bullseye Playground, sorry, with pods in it, the actual pods, okay? And then I have this container here with fabric softener sheets, a little flower pot, and then, of course, some greenery in the basket and then greenery right behind that. Um, I did decorate the space because I'm that person that wants every area of my home to look pretty. Um, these used to be, these pieces used to be in um, my old apartment. They were in the dining room area. If you guys remember the apartment I was in before this one. So now they are in here and then my laundry, which has dirty laundry in it. And I keep the vacuum cleaner in here and then over there, like the broom, swifter, stuff like that. Okay. So it's all about just organization and concealing and, you know, when you have a laundry space. And again, if you're lucky enough to have a room, actual room, you know, you can really play it up. Have, really have a beautiful space. And if it's just in a closet, like, a, like I said, a stackable, that's fine too. You just want to conceal your stuff and just have everything neat. That's what it's all about just having things really really neat and then here's my linen closet here which is a mess right now I don't know if you can see that but it's a mess right now you guys i'm living foul okay so let's go into guest bedroom number two okay so this is going to be really quick because it's pretty much the same concept that i use in the guest bedroom at the front of the apartment, the blue guest bedroom, same concept applies there. It just happens to be that this is the super girlier guest bedroom here. So there, everything is pink and um, shiny and girly, okay? But I, I kept with the same concept. There's a bed warmer, my sheet set, my bed warmer, okay? Um, and then I have a quilt, decorative quilt, which is this, the pink one right here. I have a gray quilt for the aesthetic. I tell you, I love layering. This looks like a bed and breakfast to me. If you came over here and this is this, this is what you had, you know, okay, it looks like I love you so much and I care about you so much and your comfort while you're in my space that I did all this for you. Layering, okay? Very inexpensive quilt. Number one, okay, I have a white sheet set on here, and the bed warmer is white. I buy those bed warmers from, when I catch them on sale, either at um, Walmart or Kohl's. I think have them a lot of times on sale. You can just look for them. Um, probably Amazon carries them. Or you could use a, um, they have them in a mattress pad cover. You can do that kind. And it controls one side or the other, hot, cold, whatever. Um, or you could do an electric blanket. Perfect for winter guests when they come over in the winter and they just want that warm bed instead of those cold sheets. Oh, my God. You're talking about some good sleep. You crawl into a warm bed after a nice, hot Epsom salt bath. Glass of wine. Oh, that bed. Oh, okay. I'm gonna just, I can't wait to finish filming so I can go do just that. So... Um, headboard, you guys always ask about these headboards. This head, that bedroom from class in session number one, the blue bed bed, okay? Um, I mentioned all of where everything was from, I believe, in the original tour of the apartment itself. But to recap, in case you're, you're new here and you're just tuning in, that blue, blue room, the bed is from Big Lots, and the nightstands are from Home Goods. okay? This headboard and the one in my master are from TJ Maxx, okay? And they were not that high upon buying them. Um, I added to them 
and without actually being able to show you, because I know you guys ask me that all the time. That's like the number one ask question. How do you raise those headboards and take them up the wall and give them that really luxurious look? To uh, try and describe it. It really depends on the headboard itself that you're working with, okay? This particular headboard, and I see them at TJ Maxx all the time, both this kind and the one that's in my room now. They're basically just like square bottom. Like it's just a straight bottom. There's no legs, none of that, okay? So I was just able to add two by four studs in the height that I wanted to create the same shape frame, like a rectangle, sit the headboard on top of that two by four frame, just picture a frame, like a square, okay? The height that you want, the length of the actual headboard is secured down with screws and bolts, okay? And then it just gave me the height going up the wall. Otherwise, those big pillows would obstruct. You wouldn't even be able to see the headboard, honestly, if I put it on the floor. So it's off the ground about, I added about three and a half feet. That thing is lifted up about three and a half feet off the uh, floor. So that whole top part that you're able to see past the pillows, you wouldn't be able to see it if it was actually on the floor. Those pillows would be taller than it. So again, I'm a pillow person. I'm, I love pillow. I love texture. So I'm playing up the pillows. If you don't like all of that, you do less. Okay. Um, in here, I have mirrored nightstands on both sides of the uh, bed, again, to fit the scale. They're, they're to scale. They fit perfectly over there. And because this is a guest bedroom, okay, here's a closet right here. Again, that closet is, this closet actually has my Christmas tree in it on one side because they're long. It has my Christmas tree and extra pillows in there. And then on this side of it, that's for my guests. Again, it has extra uh, sleeping pillows. And then there's a sheet set in here. No, sheet set in here. Sheet, 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 sheet set in here. The pillows are in there. And the tray that I will pull out in there to put on this bed, if a guest was to come right now, I got to pull that tray out. I got to put my uh, all my goodies in there for my guests. And this room, because the linen closet is directly across from them, they have access to the linen right there in front of them. But just to start them out, I would always lay out fresh sheets. I mean, um, fresh towels and washcloths. I mix the uh, snacks, okay? And then Wi-Fi password, all that stuff is over here. Um, so that's this side, okay? And neither... Um, Here's a little bench right here with some pillows on it that they could sit down on if they needed to. Put their shoes on. You know what I'm saying? Just want to just chill. Um, just saying. Right? So, I have a bunch of textures going on. Okay, again, nothing in here looks planned. This looks like I collected all these items over time. Again, I keep mirrors beside <clears throat> The head, bouncing the light around and giving the illusion of uh, flowers are always just a warm welcome statement to me faux or real and then I have some um, uh, those are like the clear lamps little clear lamp balls and then another gold clock in here and then the actual nightstands are mirrored okay um, but I have all this fabric and plushness on this bed going on here, okay? I just have it layered up, okay? Layered up. Curtains, again, take those curtains up. Okay, I can't move this thing back anymore, y'all. But take the curtains up way past the actual frame. I don't know if you can see that. But you take them up and give the illusion that the room is much, much taller, okay? So back over here, right? All right, so over here is the dresser. Now, this room nor the blue one have TVs in them. <sighs> My plan was to grab two Black Friday that were like super, super cheap. But I don't really, when I do have overnight guests, 
they're more so in that living room watching TV. And by the time we get done laughing and talking, they go into bed, okay? So I really haven't had the need to have TVs in the rooms yet. But I do plan to put them in there because I just think when I'm in these rooms sleeping, because I alternate rooms, let's just be real, I do. Um, <laughs> I want TV. I'm a TV person. I need TV to go to sleep. So I want TV in these both guest bedrooms. So when I'm in them, when I'm in them as the guest, I can watch TV. So on here, I just keep it simple. Dresser, candles, decor, Wi-Fi password, um, right here. Decor over here as well. I just want everything to be seamless and simple, okay? And you see, it, it doesn't, as you're looking at it here, it doesn't look like anything is over here because I went with things that are to scale. So I just have a little table over here with some little baby elephants. The mama elephant and the baby elephant. And of course, a vase, okay? In this drawer here is the... As you can see, it's the drawer of everything you need from cough drops. Again, everything you can think of, okay, I have it in these little bins. And I have, like, these little bins, I think, are from the Dollar Tree. Like, these little clear container things. And I just have, again, everything you can think of. This drawer and the one under it. This one has overflow, <laughs> of stuff like that for my guests in it as well and then down here i think the sheet sets are down there and maybe pillowcases so that is it for the pink guest bedroom okay so playing with textures textiles just really the bed is sitting up on riser so the bed is high anyway it's off the ground and it also gives that luxurious you know feel or whatever and again, just layering. Again, I keep a white comforter at the foot of all my beds. And of course, a nice soft blankie. <clears throat> there, there is a blue blankie. You didn't get to see it in the uh, blue room. But there is a blanket that I have in there for that reason. So I think it probably was getting washed. All right. So let's come in here. Hold up. Let me get you straight. Are you recording, sir, ma'am? Okay. So just remember with your guest bedrooms, if you have a guest bedroom to spare, that's if you have one. Again, it's all about the experience that you want your guests to have when they come into your space. I'm a pleaser. So again, I'm going to go over and beyond my call of duty as a host, making sure whoever it is, is comfortable and have every freaking thing they need. You guys be saying, Shay, you need to run a bed and breakfast. I could totally run a bed and breakfast, okay? Because I try and think of everything that I would want if I was in a space, okay? So, pink guest bedroom. This is the master here, okay? Same concept that I use in my guest bedrooms. I basically use in this room as well, okay? This is probably my least favorite room in the house, okay? But it is the master. Okay, so remember I told you guys, you always want to have a focal point in all your rooms, okay? And you're always going to have a focal point. It's going to be either your bed in the bedroom or the TV. It's what you see first when you walk in the room. Focus, your stupid camera. In this case, you walk in the room. My bed is against this wall, so this is my focal point down here. So in here, I have a 75-inch TV. And it is the exact same size as the cabinet. Remember I told you guys, do not have a TV smaller than the cabinet. Okay? It needs to be the exact same scale or the TV needs, I mean, the cabinet needs to be larger. Okay? So in my case here, um, it just fit perfect with this slender cabinet here which came from a, uh, a store that sells consignment and new furniture. Um, that piece, as well as the piece, the actually the dining room table and the buffet are from the same place. Okay, so um, have the TV mounted on the wall, okay? Um, and then I just have, okay, the cabinet is gold. So you remember everything pretty much in there was like silvers and hints of gold as you approach the laundry area. And also keep in mind, 
in the laundry room, I played with circle and square. I told you I'm all about that whole circle square feel. In this room, though, this is probably the only room, the only round thing in this room is this table right here. In this room, everything is squared off. That's probably why I don't like the room because the, the, okay. So here's my focal point there, okay. I looked up and I have a sitting area in the space where I could just come and y'all, let me just show y'all some, okay. Y'all better get into it. I'm trying to tell y'all, get into it, okay? I can read this a gazillion times. This is the secret, you guys, okay? Y'all want to know how I live the life I live, how I, my energy is always the way it is, okay? Law of attraction, okay? Law of attraction, okay? So I have a seating area here. With the little round mirror table, again, I'm layering again because um, I have a tray on top, a mirror tray on top of a mirror table. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm a bling and a little mirror clock right there. And I sit here sometimes just like this. Mm -hmm. And I think, I meditate, I pray, and I just sit right here and just do nothing, okay? Again, from here... I can see all the way to the front door, in my front door. And then I just have items to scale in this space, okay? So I couldn't, my space didn't warrant me to get super big plush chairs, okay? It would have been too crowded. I wouldn't have been able to enjoy it. So I had to go with chairs that were to size in my space, a little table to sit a drink down on or whatever. And again, um... That is the only thing in here that's round. Starting on this wall. Oh, sorry. Here. Over oh, here. Have a mosaic piece here. Again, I'm playing up this space. That piece is really, really big. See that? It is above the doors. I honestly didn't mean to hang it that high up. <laughs> but I was, by the time I hung out to this room, I think I was tired. So, anyway, that big piece is from... Ross, very inexpensive, Ross, um, so it's gold, silver mix, okay, this room is the gold, silver-ish room, okay, all right, so gold piece down there, okay, and then over here, and finally, my bed, okay, Again, my bed is on risers. I love a high bed. I love the feel of it. I love the look of it. Again, this headboard, TJ Maxx. I raised it up about three, about three and a half feet again um, to give that up the wall luxurious. Like I paid a lot of money for this tufted headboard. I paid probably not even, I don't even think a hundred dollars. Caught it on clearance, both of them. At like I said, TJ Maxx, okay? So, and they have the nail head trim on the side. It just gives that look of, whoa, girl, you doing it. Can't pay nothing for it, okay? I do have a video on my channel. I believe it's a, it's way on down, but I built a headboard from scratch for the guest bedroom in the house. I will try and find that video and link it for you down below. I built it from scratch, Wood built the actual headboard and then re upholstered it. I'll try to find that video and link it in this video in case you're curious if I still have it. And then, um, I have some really wide cabinets for nightstands. Okay, um, this one has doors on it. Okay, and it's very long. Okay, I'm playing up again my side, I'm working with my size, so I didn't want to go with small nightstands. In this space because I could use larger ones and I could actually use a cabinet um what I was trying to tell miss Tabitha when we were discussing her bedroom situation when you're in the bed you should be able to just do that okay see how I just I just reach right over here and put my remote I got my wine all right your everything to scale, bed height, 
Nice thing you should be able to reach right over. Boom, there you go. Turn my lamp off, reach right there, turn it off, okay? You shouldn't be down here with a nightstand, you know, way down there, or it needs to be the scale. This is perfect bed height, even though I raised the bed up. It's tall enough that I can just reach right from bed to nightstand seamless, okay? Again, mirrors on the side. And when I do mirrored, I try and match them with, again, to scale. I'm still playing with scale. I'm always playing with scale. So I match them. The width of them needs to be space between the headboard and the mirror. And then whatever the wall is with the frame over here on the side. And then the actual length. And then I go with a, a lamp that's to scale as well. So I wouldn't, me personally, on this very tall chest, okay, um, it would look really crazy, in my opinion, if I went with a lamp shorter than this. It just looked crazy to me. Visually for me. I can't explain to you how I'm looking at it, but for me, anything smaller than what I have here is too small. Okay, because that's a large chest, first of all. A large mirror, so I needed another large piece to balance it out because I had the room and the space for it. And I did the exact same thing on that side as well. Everything is mirrored. The chest over here, though, I don't know if I can be able to show you guys. It's the exact same size and width, height and all, except that one has drawers. It's a mirrored piece as well. It's the same texture, wood frame look, and it just has drawers on it, okay? And then again, the exact same situation over there, oops, okay? And then on my bed, same thing like I do with the, uh, with the guest bedrooms. Um, I have a bed warmer on here. Again, I have mine on risers. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. You see that right here? Okay, wait, right here, that, <laughs> down there, okay. I don't use bed skirts, right? Because the bed is on risers. I want to camouflage those risers. And I don't, I haven't used an actual bed skirt, oh my God, in years. I use, because I buy, my beds are all queens, every bed in this apartment is a queen all three beds um i keep saying i'm gonna treat myself <coughs> to a king size bed but then too it'll probably give me anxiety because it's just me in it and it's probably too much space for me to work with so i'm probably just in my mind thinking treat myself to one but i probably never will as long as it's just me because it's probably give me anxiety but anyway I use king size comforters though on all the beds. Quilts, king size, everything's king size because I like that draped overlook and that layery look. So that is actually a flat king size sheet that I have used as a bed skirt concealer to conceal being able to see underneath the bed. But again, I'm a layer person, so as you can see. It's just layered up, just layered pillows, the whole nine. And then over there um, is a bench, right over there, with pillows on it. And then over there in the corner is a um, big vase and a little table stool-ish thing that I've just converted into a plant stand um, that's also in gold and wood. So, again, mixing those textures. And, of course, I have... Um, we call that the throw over there as well. And then one here, again, a white comforter at the foot of the bed. You're always going to find a white comforter. It just gives that hotel, that bed and breakfast feel that I love. And it's extra bedding and it's all year long. The way you see these beds right now is how they will stay even through the summer months. Because in the summer, even though it's hot, I'll have it freezing cold in here though. So, it'll, you'll get the same effect as you would, like, winter feel because it'll be freezing in here. So, you'll want all of those covers even in the summertime here at my house. Okay. So, I think that, and again, with the curtains, 
um, I just basically took them a little bit higher than the window sill just to give the illusion and draw the eye up because the TV is so up. So I wanted everything, you know, when you look up that floor around there, okay? And then the same thing over here on that window there, okay? And then these windows, I mean mirrors right here, reflect the light from these two windows during the day. So again, it gives this room a much larger feel. This room is way, way, way bigger than the room I had back at the house. So I, I actually love the size of the room. I think what I don't like about this room is the color. I'm over the yellow. I'm, I'm, I told you guys I'm switching to um, the Royal Eggplant and Silver Gold Mix. So that's my next um, project is to swap out all of this stuff for the eggplant color. I think it'll be a lot more cozier or something. I don't know. I think I'll like it better. And then with the rug, I know someone asked me this question. And the same rule applies with bed rugs as it does with your living room rug. Someone wanted to know, how do you know if your rug is big enough for your bed, basically? All right. Don't pay this one no attention right here. Oh, this one. I like to layer. I just told you that. All right, so this one used to be in the living room, okay? Let me see, show that. This is how you know this is big enough, okay? See all that space from the edge right here to the bed, okay? Look down here at the bottom. See that space down there? The same amount of room, Okay? is all the way around the bed on the other side as well that's how you know your rug is big enough for your bed okay you need to have at least two and a half feet of rug to three feet preferably of space all around the whole section of the bed area okay same concept for that in a bedroom as in a living room, okay? You want the whole bed to be able to sit on the rug with room to step off on the sides. When you get off the bed, you still want rug, okay? At least two and a half, three feet, preferably is a good, good size. So this is like the perfect size. And again, the same amount of space is on that side over there. And I just layered it with <clears throat> this rug because I'm a layer person. And this one don't shed nowhere near like that big one in the living room does, by the way. Okay, so and again, I just have um, canvas sample pretty much over here. Okay, you can't even see me. Never mind. Yeah, I'm sorry. I kept it sample. I just have my perfumes and a blinged out tray, um, the components for the TV, all that stuff, whatever. Another salt lamp to diffuse negative energy coming from the TV. And... This candle, which needs to be tossed out because it's burnt down. Okay, okay. So, that is it, you guys. That is going to conclude our class session, okay? Oh, well, the bathroom. Let me just, okay. Oh, God, it's not clean in here, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Bathroom, again, it's just very cut and dry in, in my bathroom. Okay. In my bathroom, decorate your bathroom to scale. Okay, if you got now, I showed you the other bathroom, that's a tiny little bathroom, but I played it up and gave the illusion that it was much larger than it is by the items that I used in that bathroom. Okay, and here in this bathroom, this one is bigger. Okay, so I don't know if you can see all that I got going on here. I got my cabinet, my mirror cabinet. Okay, I bust my dang. Um, a pocket there jar the other day getting out the tub with my Epsom salt in that sat over here. So I got to replace that. But I have, normally it's one over here with uh, Epsom salt in it, a big one. Then I have cotton rounds. Again, I love playing up these pocket there jars when I can and where I can. Okay? Cotton balls, rounds, and then I do have Q-tips over there. Anyway, mirror stand, a wooden tray, clear but practical products okay even they're decorative they're still practical greenery 
on a candlestick, okay? And then a white candlestick with this candle, all right? And then my floor rugs here. Coil it, of course. And then right. Um, okay, we tangled up, y'all. Hold up. Okay, wait a minute, y'all. Oh, my Lord. Okay. All right, so then in this particular bathroom, I had enough room to do this uh, mother of pearl little footstool with a big tall plant on it, okay? And then on the back of the toilet seat, I have just a, a clear plant. I mean, a clear plant. I have a clear vase with a colored plant, pop of color. And then on the wall, I just have those two big um, pictures there side by side. Okay, and nothing on that wall here because I have all that other going on there. I told you less is more. Um, over here, I just have two of those. Oh, okay, wait, two of these things one right here and one over here. Okay, and then the mirror, pineapple, hand towel, and then my um. Soap dispensers right there. This sink is totally dirty and nasty. Don't look over there. And then again, the same thing that I showed you guys in the other bathroom. I use curtain panels, white curtain panels, and I take them up super high. Really, really high. Here's the top of the uh well, there's the frame of the actual shower. See that right there? Right here. Okay, look how much I added maybe like, like a foot and a, some change further up there. Okay, yeah. So again, and behind, I just have a textured, a cloth shower curtain. Okay, so when I do take everything down to laundry, it, it all goes in the laundry. Then I hang it back up when it is dry. And of course, um... This one, bathroom is big enough for three rugs in there. Okay. That is it, you guys. We have made it to the end. Class is out. And we did it in much less time than we did the last one. Okay. So, I truly hope that this was helpful. Okay. Um... As it, the first one was. Again, if you haven't seen the first one, it'll be linked somewhere in this video underneath somewhere. Go check that one out if you haven't already. If you have any further questions about anything, um, just leave them down below and I'll try and answer them for you. Again, these tips that I'm sharing with you guys on this class one and two are just my own personal little preferences that I use in my space. I feel like they can be applied to any decor style, no matter what it is, okay? Because all I want you to kind of focus on is everything to scale, the right size for the space that you're given, playing with textures and patterns, okay? And that's pretty much it. Once you grasp the, the size situation, okay, <laughs> and working with the space that you're given, so not over overcrowding a space and not under decorating a space either, unless, of course, you are a true minimalist person, but even a minimalist, I think, still needs to focus on things to scale and size, even if they do less decor, the scale and size is still important to me, that's just me, okay, so, again, I hope it was helpful. You guys leave me comments down below. Let me know um, what other types of videos in this sector you would like to see. I'd be glad to produce them for you. Hugs and kisses. Mm -hmm. Love you guys so very much. To the morning back. Everyone stay blessed. Stay positive. Stay prayed up. Don't let anyone dictate y'all mood. Okay? You do something good for yourself, and you always do something good for somebody else. And be careful when you do it. Let me tell y'all something before I go. I'm not freaking kidding y'all. I'm not playing no games with y'all. If you have not read this book right here and you wonder how I live, the life I live, 
how my personality, how my spirit is how it is, this book in conjunction with the Lord's word and prayer, honey, is no joke. Powerful will change your life, your finances, lots of things, lots of things. Get into it now. Okay, I got to go because um, I just do. So I'll catch you guys in another video really, really soon. Again, let me know down below if this video was helpful and what else you would like to see. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I covered any additional questions that you may have had on the decor side as it relates to things in my space. Hopefully I did. Um, for your own general personal questions about decor stuff, continue to just email me, leave me uh, comments down below, and I will try my dag don't this to uh, get you an answer, okay, some way or another. So, I will see you guys in another video really, really soon. Hopefully, this was helpful, and I got to go. Bye, y'all.